That's a pro saw. It's got this guy, 10 and a quarter inch Milwaukee saw. So the good thing about this is that it cuts three and five eighths when it's at 90 degrees. And that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna increase productivity a whole lot because now we can just make a cut from the top, and make a cut in the bottom, and then that piece completely falls off. Three and five eighths, that's more than halfway on a seven inch timber. We're gonna unbox this guy and see what it looks like inside. So this carrying case is pretty sweet. It comes molded so you can put your saw in there. It also has a knob for you to put extra blades in there and you can store them safely with this little nut. So right off the bat, just kind of comparing these two saws, you can see the size difference in this. So this is a seven and a quarter and that's the 10 and a quarter right there. The handle to, to move the, the blade guard is pretty large. That way, if you need to you get it out of the way, you can easily manipulate it with one hand and you're not having to just use your thumb. The table seems pretty, pretty rigid. It's almost a quarter of an inch. So I think it's not gonna flex at all when you're doing a, a pretty heavy piece you have a rip fence over here that you can just take out and invert. And it has inch measurements so that you can set it to what you need. And I think right here you also have inch measurements on the rip fence as well to help you. So that's pretty convenient. This lever seems pretty easy to manipulate. So because it has the handle on the top you can get some good purchase and pop it open. And then tilt the bed. Here's something super cool that I've not seen in other saws. So if you see over here, the depth gauge has actual inch measurements. Whereas when you get to using a, a different saw, they have this crazy scale, which is max two by three ply, half ply, one quarter ply. Pretty happy that this measures in inches because that's something that I've been struggling with. Overall, it seems like it's a super comfortable saw. Also like that the that the cable is pretty thick. It's 14 gauge, so about 15 amps. So the discharge is gonna be on the right and I can stay safe on this side. And I can still see the saw blade and the, the kerf guide as well. Let's go ahead and cut with the saw and see what it does. All right, so now we're trying out the Milwaukee 10 and a quarter inch framing saw. And it's set to max depth, so it should cut three and five eighths of an inch. Holy smokes, that is a deep cut and also a very wide kerf. So take a look at both of those. That's a seven and a quarter, that's 10 and a quarter. Yep, three and five eighths and a hair over that. That's a pretty good first impression. That saw is awesome. So let's go ahead and cut off the rest of that piece because uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to see how, how easy it is to cut off an entire a timber like this in half. That is super smooth and <laughs> super happy with that. Look at that, there's like a, a 32nd of wood that's there, maybe even 1 64th, but over here it's super flush. So that, that table is true. It's perfectly set at 90 degrees, especially when you set it all the way to the stops. So this is an awesome saw. I think it's gonna make life a whole lot better through our timber frame projects. And uh, I can't wait to use it on some of our joinery. So there's an Allen key back here. That Allen key fits right there. So. There's a blade lock button right here. All you gotta do, set the Allen key in, and, yep, there it is. That's how you loosen it. Comes right out. And tighten it back up. And put your Allen key away. There's a lot of framing saws out there, a lot of 10 and a quarter inch. Bigfoot, there's the skill saw, Makita, and then there's a Milwaukee. Milwaukee is the lowest price option. I got this one for just around 300 bucks. If you are in the market for a 10 and a quarter inch framing saw, don't discredit the Milwaukee 10 and a quarter because as you can see, it can do the job just as well as, as some of the other saws. These components are so oversized that it's really easy to, to use them. This is one of those saws that you absolutely need. You need a 10 and a quarter inch and you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're dealing with timbers that are anywhere near seven inches, this is gonna save you so much time. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, hope you learned something. I certainly did, thanks.